The risky business of flipping real estate is back. If you were looking for a sign that the housing market has rebounded, this is it. Tonight, you're going to meet women taking big risks, putting their own family's finances on the line to buy hot mess houses, fix them up, and sell them, they hope, for a profit. Will it work? Here's ABC's Rebecca Jarvis for our series, Realty Check. So this is the only bathroom? It is the only bathroom. It's Monday morning and we're in Charlotte, North Carolina, following a pair of house flippers. Do you know anything on the electrical or the plumbing? I don't think it's been updated. Two women who have been in real estate for decades looking for their next big score. But this property looks like a home buyer's nightmare. 1,100 square feet of hidden horrors. I saw from the exterior, the windows would probably have to be replaced. There's definitely a good bit of wood rot. Wood rot, warped floors, a dated bathroom, and a special surprise in the master closet. Wow, oh, okay. Fireplace. Yeah. I don't think this is just kind of putting paint on it and fixing it up. This is mm. a major redo. With the housing market improving since the crash of 2008, home flippers like, like Kim Williams and Maria Powell are taking market. advantage of the turnaround. Just taking the yeah, ugly house and making it pretty. Enough. All right, so what do you think of this one? Well, it's a lot of work. There are some red flags with this one. To but it still could be a great property to flip. Flips in North Carolina are up 14% in the last year, with flippers averaging $50,000 gross profit per property. Kim and Maria say this $175,000 property with the right renovations and additions could sell for as much as $500,000. What the f What happened? Oh, f the whole wall's falling down. But there are no guarantees. You're looking at 35 to maybe 40. Thousand? Yeah. TV shows about flipping are everywhere, from flipping Vegas to flipping San Diego, flip this house, even rehab addicts. They make it seem like it's an investor's playground, if you know what you're doing. Across town, Lisa, a stay-at-home mom, and her friend Armella and Armella's sister, Alita, are first-time flippers trying to get into the game. <laughs> a lot of people would say you That's should right. never get into business with friends or family. We did yes. both. <laughs> we did both. Yeah. And they're hoping there's still money to be made. We definitely missed the heyday of really cheap housing, but then we were worried we would have trouble reselling it. After losing out on six other properties in bidding wars, they bought this modest three-bedroom for $150,000. And what did it look like when you pulled up? It was awful. <laughs> <laughs> it was awful. It was a dump. The kitchen floor was sinking in. You, yeah. you yeah. walked in and you were kind of crooked. The yard was <laughs> a jungle. The surveyor still can't figure out exactly where the property line is. Between renovations and real estate fees, they put $60,000 into the project figuring things out as they went. This one might be a standard. This one might be a standard. That looks like a standard, but... It's 13 and a fourth by... Look how we sound like we know what we're talking about. What did the husbands and the kids say when you told them we're flipping? Oh, he was a little nervous, and then when we had to take out the mortgage, he was a little bit more nervous. <laughs> and then when um, we had to put in money, he was even more nervous. That one's mine. Okay. Armella spent eight years helping her husband Chris get his physician's practice off the ground and raising their daughters. But it was the itch to create her own business that led to this gamble. Yeah, it scared me, yeah. I was nervous. <laughs> well, the, uh, first the house looked really bad. Yeah. First rule of real estate, location, location, location. And not every market is as flip friendly as Charlotte. Making a profit can be tough. To make this work as a living, you've got to be working about four, five, six at least to make four, it work. Four, five to six to make Flip, this work in a year. Look, Maria, this is already under contract. With 12 flips under their belt, Kim and Maria are scouting this up and coming neighborhood for homes to add to their portfolio. How you guys doing? They already have one home going up on this block. The people that owned it and lived in it for 40 years were actually here to watch it go down. 313 McDonald will be no more. This used to be a 1,200 square foot home bought for $240,000. Kim and Maria tore it down and are completely rebuilding 3,800 square feet. They plan on putting it on the market for $899,000. I think the toughest thing right now is finding the deals. Yeah. Two years ago, able to find 
this type of property over and over and over again. See how we have the border up here? They aim for an average return of 25 to 30 percent on each rehabbed property. It looks easy on TV, but it's not easy. Most people lose money on flips. I know a lot of people that tend to get into some of these deals and they feel that they can do a lot of the work themselves and then when it becomes complicated then they have to hire other people and they haven't factored that cost in. We so. need the lighting for sure, we need the butcher block. Uh, and they bargain hunt for everything. Yeah, lighting, sinks, countertops and molding because every dollar saved is another dollar in their pocket. Could I buy a turd if it were half off? <laughs> Armella, Lisa, and Alita's first time flip was finally finished after tearing down a wall, removing the chimney, gutting the kitchen, enduring four cases of poison ivy, and surviving a snake encounter. There was twice, a snake twice. twice. Two different ones. They recently listed the property for $275,000. What did you really think of this one? Um, I think personally for me, we want something that we can grow into. I think it's priced well. But even after a successful open house, they still don't have any offers. If you drop the 250, you're done. You know, we get somewhere in the 240s, maybe we get a bidding war. And that leads the women to seriously assess their finances and how long they can keep the house on the market. Are we still okay to hold until January? Yeah, I think we're okay to hold till January. It's just every time we, you know, we have to always make a mortgage payment. If they manage to sell for the list price of two seventy five, they'll net twenty seven thousand dollars, which they plan to invest in their next flip. But if they have to drop the price and just make a few thousand dollars, well, they say it's still worth it. I think it will be a little like watching your little one go off to college when they're 18. It's Gone. definitely. I haven't sold in my head already. I'm like, it's old. <laughs> we're moving on. Yeah. They're hoping the house sells soon. Never thought I'd be out here doing this just to sell the house. Or else they'll be stuck shoveling snow before too long. For Nightline, I'm Rebecca Jarvis in Charlotte, North Carolina.